Hello, ladies. I wanted to pop on really quickly because I am having a similar conversation with several ladies already this week. And of course, when that happens, I know that it can be great to pop in and do a quick five minute focus video to be able to help you guys also have the same support. So let's talk about coping. When we are changing, then others around us may see that change and feel some resistance and fear and thinking about, oh my gosh, she's doing this change. How is that going to impact me? How is that going to make life harder for me? If she changes, will she leave me? If she changes, you know, how much more do I have to work around what she's doing or how will this make more things more difficult? And really there can just be a fear of the unknown. And all of that is so normal. And those around us may not have all the coping tools and the support that you guys have in changing. And so the reality is, is that when we change, the others in our life, especially our significant other and our children, they are forced to recalibrate. And that can put them a little on edge and defensive mode and be like, whoa, what's happening here? Everything that I've known and I'm comfortable with, that is changing because this person I love is changing. And so a beautiful thing we can do is lean into it and be able to have compassion for them with knowing that they're going through some struggles as well. And when we can have compassion and say, wow, you've got some fears going on um, in your mind, you're saying that, and you reassure them, reassure them that this is going to positively impact them. How is that? Well, if you're eating cleaner, well, guess what, babe? You're gonna have lunches ready because I'm already making my lunches, so would you like me to make your lunch? I have extra food. Um, all I need to do is just pack it up, and there you go, right? And now, let's pretend, in this example, husband doesn't have to worry about making lunches on his own. How is that gonna positively impact him? And guess what, it's gonna be yummy food, and it's gonna be clean food, and you're gonna feel better all day long because you're having some healthy food. Or, you know, when I'm changing, and I'm working on my depression or anxiety, then I'm gonna be happier for you. You know, I'm gonna be a more engaged wife. I'm gonna be more upbeat. I'm gonna have more resiliency and I'm also really gonna be more engaged maybe with the kids, let's say. So when you can express very specifically about how this might positively impact them, they're more apt to embrace that change that you're going to be deciding and committed to. So if you're noticing any resistance from those around you, from your kids to your husband to your friends who you go out with, and now all of a sudden you're needing to make healthier food choices and you're saying no to wine or you're saying no to some of the unhealthy foods you used to eat with them, just know it's okay if they're not all the way on board and we don't need to force them to come along. But the more that you can show up happy and you can show up like I got this and this is the journey and I'm committed and I'm going to do this and it's not going to take away from things that we're doing. It's not going to make things more difficult because I'm owning my journey. This is my responsibility and it's only going to positively impact our relationship. You'll see. So that's one of the things I wanted to comment on today. Comment below if you face that yourself. Um, having resistance from others is not an easy thing. And so utilize your tools with honing in on connecting with yourself and being able to separate and know they are on their own journey and that is okay. They may not come along with you. That is okay. But we don't need to make it harder for you by expecting that they're going to come along with you and do this with you. You are 100% responsible for your journey and the choices you make. And so no matter what is going on around you, you can still choose to do this. So utilize your tools, the emotional check-in, the emotional unload, this Facebook group, you know, coaching sessions, group coaching, and other things that you have as well. All right, I am already at five minutes. This is so hard for me to just nail it down in five minutes. So 
I will share, share one more thing with you before we pop off here. <laughs> so I wanted to share with you one of the things that I do to remind myself to use coping tools is I put alarms on my phone. And I've talked with you guys, a few of you guys about this. So here is what it looks like. I don't know if you can read that, but the first one, it says 6 a.m. and it says, welcome to your life. And it's a nice alarm that goes off in the morning. It just says, welcome to your life. Sometimes I get up, change that and get up at five o'clock, but the last couple days I've been getting up at six. Now the next one, it is one o'clock and it says, your needs matter. That is a reminder for me to do an emotional check-in at one o'clock because one o'clock-ish is the time when it's easy for me to go mindless. The morning is easy, but I do need something to just kind of take me out of my day and connect with myself. And I have a little nursery rhyme sounding alarm that goes off here. So it's not like a, it's not like a rah, 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 annoying alarm. That's going to completely do the opposite of what we want to be doing here. So this one, it says my needs matter. Now the next one is four o'clock and that one says L glutamine water. That's another reminder for me to do another emotional check-in. That's what I know what it means. And it's a reminder to get my L-glutamine water in. So I have that 32 ounces of L-glutamine water um, drank, drank, is that the right English? Drank, drunken, <laughs> before I have dinner. So trying to have L-glutamine water on an empty stomach is what's going to make it most effective. All right, so then last one. Well, I'll have two more. The 631, that one, it says, it's okay to relax. Sometimes in the evening, I have a hard time shutting off and relaxing and just being present with my kids. So it is a daily practice. And I, it's just this little alarm that reminds me permission to relax no matter what you've done, how much you've done, or how much you've not done. It's okay to relax. And you can see I have little emojis there that bring a little bit of a sense of sanctuary and nurturing. So I have a rainbow and a star, a sun, and a, a flower. Okay, now the last one, which I might move this a little earlier in the day, it's 7 p.m. and it says, sweets won't fix the pain. I'm gonna open that one up a little bit because it's long. Sweets won't fix the pain. I cannot get my nurturing from eating sweets. I get my nurturing from connecting with me and setting boundaries. I can do that. So that's what it all says here. And so it's really small length and I have to really read it every time I do. But it's a good reminder that yes, I might be in daily pain with the fibromyalgia and my hip pain or tired or emotional pain too. Um, and it's a reminder that sweets won't fix it. So. Figuring out what is your system to remind you to use coping tools. Remember, two of the eight essentials for vitality, two of them, is using tools. That's what's going to make this different, and it's going to help you stick with it. So we have to use emotional tools, and you're not going to remember to use them every day. So finding a way to help you remind yourself to do them. You can use alarms like this. Again, use comforting, nurturing sounds for the alarms. Um, that's going to be really important. So I'd love to have you comment below on what is your reminder? What are you going to do to remind yourself to use your emotional tools? Remember, we want to connect with yourself through journaling um, every day or some form of journaling uh, emotions. So maybe that's the daily boost that you do. Maybe, And we also want to do three emotional tools a day as part of that. So maybe that's a few emotional check-ins. Maybe the daily boost is one of those three. Then we also want to be using emotional tools reactively when we're wanting to eat but we're not hungry. And the only way you're going to remember to use emotional tools when you're not hungry is that you're using them intentionally by some type of a system like that every single day. So remember to do that. Remember your coping tools. Other coping tools can be, yes, emotional tools, but it can be things like music, having a playlist of maybe when you feel angry or when you feel sad or when you feel unworthy, you're having different playlists that help, help release the emotions and center you back into your sanctuary and positivity. For me, singing is a big one. I noticed yesterday that I was just like, 
oh, I need a clean and I really don't want to do these dishes. And so I turned on some music on Pandora and it was Celine Dion's I Am Alive and some 90s music came on and I was singing along to it and I loved it and it made it so um, much more enjoyable, but it also filled me up to release some of the emotions that sometimes I'm not able to connect with and release. Um, so that's definitely one of my coping tools is singing. Not that I'm the best vocalist by any means, but it is helpful. So, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up. And we doubled our time, so 10 minutes. It is gonna be exciting and fun for me to try to keep these five minutes. So we'll do that next time. But I hope that this was helpful for you. Please comment below on if you've been dealing with some people in your life who are kind of resistant and um, just feeling a little apprehensive or maybe are uh, defensive about, um, about changing and what you're doing that's helping and working for you. And then the other thing I'd love for you to comment below on is how are you going to remind yourself to use coping tools? I really want to hear from everybody about that. It could be a three by five card. It could be an alarm on your phone or any other way. Comment below because you're going to get ideas from others and others are going to get ideas from you. All right, ladies, remember, stop dieting, start living because a blissfully healthy lifestyle does not have an expiration date. All right, well, you take good care of you and I will see you soon.